The Elves by the Brothers Grimm A shoemaker, by no fault of his own, had become so poor that at last he had nothing left but leather for one pair of shoes. So in the evening he cut out the shoes, which he wished to begin to make the next morning. And as he had a good conscience, he lay down quietly in his bed, commended himself to God, and fell asleep. In the morning, after he had said his prayers, and was just going to sit down to work, the two shoes stood quite finished on his table. He was astounded, and knew not what to say to it. He took the shoes in his hands to observe them closer, and they were so neatly made that there was not one bad stitch in them, just as if they were intended as a masterpiece. Soon after, too, a buyer came in, and as the shoes pleased him so well, he paid more for them than was customary, and, with the money, the shoemaker was able to purchase leather for two more pairs of shoes. He cut them out that night, and the next morning he was about to set to work with fresh courage, but he had no need to do so, for when he got up they were already made, and buyers were also not wanting, who gave him money enough to buy leather for four pairs of shoes. The following morning, too, he found the four pairs made, and so it went on constantly. What he cut out in the evening was finished by the morning, so that he soon had his honest independence again and at last became a wealthy man. Now it befell that one evening, not long before Christmas, when the man had been cutting out, he said to his wife before going to bed, What think you if we were to stay up tonight to see who it is that lends us this helping hand? The woman liked the idea and lighted a candle and then they hid themselves in the corner of the room behind some clothes which were hanging up there and there they watched. When it was midnight two pretty little naked men came in, sat down by the shoemaker's table, took all the work which was cut out before them and began to stitch and sew and hammer and so skillfully and so quickly with their little fingers that the shoemaker could not turn away his eyes for her astonishment. They did not stop until all was done and stood finished on the table, and then they ran away quickly. Next morning the woman said, These little men have made us rich, and we really must show them that we are grateful for it. They run about so, and have nothing on, and they must be cold. I'll tell thee what I'll do. I'll make them little shirts and coats and vests and trousers and knit both of them a pair of stockings. And do thou, too, make them two little pairs of shoes. The man said, I shall be very glad to do it. And one night, when everything was ready, they laid all these presents all together on the table instead of the cut-out work, and then concealed themselves to see how the little men would behave. At midnight they came bounding in, and wanted to get work at once. But as they did not find any leather cut out, but only the pretty little articles of clothing, they were at first astonished, and then they showed intense delight. They dressed themselves up with the greatest rapidity, putting the pretty clothes on and singing, Now we are boys so fine to see, why should we longer cobblers be? Then they danced and skipped and leapt over the chairs and over the benches. At last they danced all the way out the doors. From that time forth they came no more. But as long as the shoemaker lived, all went well with him, and all his undertakings prospered. There was once a poor servant girl, who was industrious and cleanly and swept the house every day, and emptied her sweepings on the great heap in the front of the door. The morning when she was just going back to her work, she found a letter on this heap, and as she could not read, she put the broom in the corner and took the letter to her master and mistress. And behold, it was an invitation from the elves 
who asked the girl to hold a child for them at its christening. The girl did not know what to do, but at length, after much persuasion, and as they told her that it was not right to refuse an invitation of this kind, she consented. Then three elves came and conducted her into their hollow mountain, where the little folks lived. Everything there was small, but more elegant and beautiful than can be described. The baby's mother lay in a bed of black ebony, ornamented with pearls. The coverlets were embroidered with gold. The cradle was of ivory, and there was a bath of gold. The girl stood as godmother, and then wanted to go home again, but the little elves urgently entreated her to stay just three days with them. So she stayed, and passed the time in pleasure and gaiety, and the little folks did all they could to make her happy. At last she set out on her way home. First they filled her pockets quite full of money, and after that they led her out, out of the mountain. When she got home, she wanted to begin her work, and took the broom, which was still standing in the corner in her hand, and began to sweep. Then some strangers came out of the house, who asked her who she was, and what business she had there. And she had not, as she thought, had been away with the little men in the mountain for three days, but indeed for seven years. In the meantime, her former masters had died. A certain mother's child had been taken out of its cradle by the elves, and a changeling with a large head and staring eyes, which would do nothing but eat and drink, was laid in its place. In her trouble, she went to her neighbour and asked for advice. The neighbour said that she was to carry the changeling into the kitchen, set it down on the hearth, light a fire, and boil some water in two eggshells, which would make the changeling laugh. And if he laughed, all would be over with him. The woman did everything that her neighbour bade her. When she put the eggshells with water on the fire, suddenly the imp said, I am as old as the western forest, but never yet have I seen anyone boil anything in an eggshell. As he began to laugh, he laughed and laughed more, and whilst he was still laughing, suddenly came in a host of little elves, and they brought in the right child, set it down on the hearth, and took the changeling away again with them. <laughs>